This video will offer a quick introduction to asynchronous programming in F Sharp. So if you're familiar with other programming languages, you probably heard of the concept of asynchronous programming. It allows you to execute parts of the code on different cores of your machine and therefore speed up computation. What we're going to do here is introduce this concept in F Sharp and lay the foundation for subsequent videos where we're going to go into more details on some of the concepts. We are going to sh quickly show how to use asynchronous programming by means of one example function that we're going to create. We're going to call it sleep example. And it's going to take one input argument that's going to be time of type integer. Now, this integer is going to tell us how long we want to sleep. So this is a method that's only going to wait for a couple seconds and then uh, allow us to continue. So it's not doing much interesting. It's just that we want to have something to illustrate that, that we can use interchangeably with more demanding computations, let's say. So whenever we want to define something that we can run asynchronously, we need to define that in what's called an async block. So it's a block of code that we separate by curly braces, and we would write it in the following way. Async, and then the curly braces like this. And in between here, we can specify the code that we want to have as part of this asynchronous block. Now, Normally, you would just define the body of a function directly uh, without using this async keyword in the beginning. But if we wrap it in this async structure, that's going to allow us to execute it asynchronously afterwards. So we're going to see that in a, in a second. But I'm going to start this off by just printing to the console that we're going to sleep. Sleeping for, and then we'll insert the time here, seconds. Like that. Once we've done this, we're going to actually sleep with our program and we're going to use a keyword called do bang. That's how you pronounce this exclamation mark at the end. This thing is the same as the do command that you're used to. So we use the do command whenever we want to execute something without, you know, storing the value in some way. The do bang keyword is the same as the do command, but it allows us to use the functionality in an asynchronous way. For now, we can just think of this as equivalent to the do command, but we're going to see in a second when we run this example what the difference is. So let me just have it there for now, and we're going to put in async.sleep. So this is a function that takes a time parameter, and luckily we have a time parameter. The time is in milliseconds in this function, though, so we need to multiply it by a 1,000, and it's going to take the current thread that we're on and make it sleep for a thousand milliseconds or a thousand, well, in this case, a thousand times the time parameter that we, that we specify. After we've done this, we're going to resume the program and then we want to print again, print FN, just that we're waking up. Okay. And let's say, <clears throat> let's say you wanted to return something from this function as well. You would be used to just putting something at the end of the function, and that would sort of be sufficient. Like, let's say you want to return the number six, you would just put it like this. This will not work in the asynchronous way if you want to return this value. What you need to do instead is you need to actually specify the return keyword. I know you're not used to this when you're running F-sharp functions, but when you're wrapping them in this asynchronous block, we need to also add the return statement. In order for us to just see that this works, let me quickly execute what we provided here. So I'm going to call sleep example. And what I'm going to give it is two seconds. So let's execute this and see what happens. Actually, what I need to do in order to run this, so it's good that I messed up here a little bit. When I call this sleep example now, you can see that nothing actually evaluated at the bottom. So we got a return here of value it async int. This is what sort of this last statement here represents. And when you define an asynchronous block like this, it doesn't just run per default. So this is a structure that we return and we can sort of call it here, but in order to actually invoke the computation, what we need to do is we need to send this to something called async dot run synchronously, like that. When we do this, that will actually run the computation. Otherwise, it will not run like we saw just now, it would just define whatever constructs we have. So let me execute this and now we'll see what we get. So you can see that it slept for two seconds and then printed waking up. So now it actually works and it executes the way we would expect it to. The thing now is if we have multiple computations occurring in sequence, 
this might take a long time. So let's say you had something more complex. Um, let me slightly redefine what we have at the bottom here, and then we're going to see the utility of having these asynchronous computational processes. So let's say I have some lists, one, two, one, and I send this to list.map like that, and then find time. So I would here call my function sleep example, and then provide whatever time I have. So that would then call the sleep example function on each part, like on each element of our list. And I would send this in to a function called async dot sequential. And then after that, I would then run this. All right, let me comment out the first execution here. And this async dot sequential thing that I specified, let's not focus too much on it for now, but it tells us that it will run these one by one. What I will additionally do just to record the amount of time that we spend on the execution is to put these two statements here. That just records whatever the time was at the beginning at the end so we can see the difference. Let me execute. And you can see now that we're sleeping and we're finishing our sleep for one second before we began the sleeping for two seconds. Then we slept for one second again and then waking up. For you to see that, let me execute it again and pay attention to the fact that we're waking up before we actually start the, the next process of sleeping. Also pay attention to the full time here, which took four seconds to evaluate. So one plus two plus one is four seconds and that's why it took four seconds to evaluate our program. So you see one, two, and then one again. Okay, so we see that executing this program takes a total of four seconds because we wait for one process to finish before we can actually begin the next one. What I would do in order to parallelize these computations is to change this async sequential function to parallel like that. If I just run this now, we're gonna be able to see a clear difference. So first of all, what you can note here is these ones are all executed immediately when we execute the program and they're all called before any of them wakes up. Also, if you look at the overall time that it took to execute this, it only took two seconds this time. And that's because we have a two second sleep, which is the longest one. So you can see here the clear difference and the clear utility in using parallel computations. When we use this par async parallel keyword, we were able to execute these things in parallel and therefore speed up computation quite significantly. And we were able to do that because we have the function body wrapped in this asynchronous keyword here. So that is the thing that allows us to use these parallelization of execution flows. Now, that is also the reason why we need to use this do bang because this exclamation mark here will be repeated for a lot of different keywords. So for example, the let keyword can also be called with let bang, which is where you put this exclamation mark afterwards. And that allows us to define things, but to define them using asynchronous concepts, meaning that they will only be executed when we actually run that branch. Otherwise, if we don't provide that keyword, it would just be defined as soon as the function is initiated. And that's the key difference. So this is going to be where we cut it for this video. I know this is just the tip of the iceberg, but we'll get into more details as we go. If you want to try something very simple, try replicating an example like this with asynchronous, and then you can put some computations in here and run a few processes in parallel. If you have any questions, please reach out in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.